We continue our series of retrospectives of iconic adventure game franchises. You can already find numerous videos in my channel with the complete history of series like King's Quest, Space Quest, Leisure Sweet Larry, Gabriel Knight and Loom. Also, if you are a fan of the genre, you can watch my two-hour documentary on the rise and fall of the adventure games. Please do not forget to support my channel by subscribing and turning on the notifications for it. The topic of this video is an iconic LucasArts point-and-click adventure game of the Zandra's heyday back in the 90s. We will cover the full history of Full Throttle, the game by the legendary Tim Safer. Safer is the man behind amazing adventure games like Day of the Tentacle, Grim Fandango and Full Throttle was his first game as the project lead. It was developed during a time of change when LucasArts had decided to evolve its adventure games with new themes targeted to more adult audiences and to shift from its established scam engine to more modern interfaces. The game was released on April of 1995 for the MS-DOS, Microsoft Windows and Mac OS. The story takes place in 2040 in a dystopian setting when new technology is replacing the old and established motorized means of transportation. The main character, Ben Throttle, is the leader of one of the last remaining biker gangs called the Polecats. The Polecats ride mainly Corley motorcycles manufactured by the last remaining motorcycle company Corley Motors. After a peculiar series of events, Corley Motors mogul Malcolm Corley is found murdered and Ben Throttle gets framed for the murder. He embarks on a quest to find the real culprit and clear his and his gang's name. After the lengthy introduction scene, the game starts like a typical adventure game from a third-person perspective. Players can move the main character in every scene of the game and interact with objects and other non-player characters. Movement between scenes can take place either on foot or via the character's motorbike, both types denoted by their own icon. Contrary to previous LucasArts adventures, the game's action takes place on a full screen instead of the two-thirds available in Scam Engine releases. Full Throttle's interface and inventory followed the example of the previous LucasArts game Sam and Max Hit the Road. Objects or characters with which Ben can interact are indicated by a red square appearing around the cursor's crosshairs when it is placed over the object. When this is done and the mouse button is pressed, a pie menu appears resembling the emblem of the Polkats gang. Some of the actions available on that pie menu to interact with objects and the environment are a skull's mouth for talk, eyes for examine and a fist for use, pull or pick up. There is also a boot icon with some dubious results from time to time. Right clicking anywhere on the screen brings up the game's inventory which can be examined or dragged and dropped on other objects or the environment to trigger the relevant action. It also contains portions where the player is required to drive, combating enemy bikers with punches and kicks and later chains, planks and other crude weapons. Development of Full Throttle began immediately after the release of LucasArts Day of the Tentacle game in 1993. The company wanted to revitalize the genre both on the depicted themes and in terms of technology and gameplay. They have asked their designers, including Dave Grossman and Tim Safer, to come up with ideas for upcoming titles. Safer pitched five different games and his last, which included a biker gang concept, was received positively. However, as he mentioned, he had to make several revisions to the initial pitch in order to get the green light from LucasArts and omit some controversial topics from the game like a peyote-induced hallucination scene. Safer said that he liked the idea of a biker gang from the beginning as they resembled, in his mind, a lot of the pirates culture. He was handling both a game story and artwork, stating that this was more or less a solo project with 30 more people on board. Full Throttle's development lasted for one and a half years, which was a long period for that era, at a budget of more than one million. 
the SCAM engine was used with a lot of enhancements from LucasArts' latest insane engine short for interactive streaming animation engine which could accommodate full motion video. The game was released in a CD-ROM that also supported other than the full motion video, fully voiced dialogues and a digital audio soundtrack. When released, it was praised by critics and fans alike, selling over 1 million units, exceeding its sales goal by 10 times. It was the first LucasArts game to reach such levels of sales. Critics praised the game's story, character and graphics, but criticized its small duration and linearity. It was nominated for multiple awards and even made it to the second place of the Adventure Game of the Year list. The success of the game led to initial discussions within LucasArts for a sequel. However, the general decline in popularity of the adventure game genre in the later part of the 90s delayed the project. Development finally began in early spring of 2000 at a time when Tim Schafer had already left the company. Other members of the original team were selected to helm the project, but as development progressed, several disagreements among the team caused multiple delays. The sequel's project was cancelled in November of 2000, when the game was almost 30% complete. Another sequel was announced by LucasArts two years later, titled Full Throttle Hell on Wheels, a game that was planned to be released for consoles also, like the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Hell on Wheels would have been an action-adventure with more emphasis on fighting. A playable demo and a teaser trailer were presented on the E3 of 2003, but the project was cancelled abruptly a few months after the E3 without any plausible reasoning from the company. In the years that followed, most of the original Full Throttle team left LucasArts and all plans for a possible sequel were dropped. However, Tim Schafer, who in the meantime had set up his own company, Double Fine Productions, announced in 2015 that they were developing a remastered version of Full Throttle. The game was released two years later, in 2017, for the Microsoft Windows, OS X, Linux and PlayStation 4. The remastered version of Full Throttle includes updated graphics and sound, improved controls and developer commentary along with offering the player the option to choose between the new updated sound and graphics and the original ones. Lately, it was revealed that a screenplay was written by the British writer and director Duncan Jones based on Full Throttle's story and setting. It has been pitched to Disney but there is no update yet on the future of the project. That was the full history of Full Throttle, a smash hit of the adventure game genre that unfortunately fell victim to a shifting industry after its release that did not allow it to grow and evolve into a full-fledged franchise. Do not forget to watch my other retrospectives on iconic franchises like Loom, King's Quest, Space Quest, Gabriel Knight and more. You can also find my two-hour documentary on the rise and fall of the adventure games. If you like the content of my channel, please consider supporting it by subscribing and turning on the notifications for it. We will have more adventure games videos soon. Thank you all for watching.